Hey guys, Shutters and Triggers here, uh, coming at you with my very first full-length gun review. Um, I am going to review the CAR CM9, which has been uh, my EDC firearm in rotation with my Glock 26 for the past few months now. Um, I'm going to go over specifics of it and then kind of bust into some of my opinions, and then we'll just kind of go from there and see what happens. First of all, the CAR CM9 is a pocket 9mm. Um, it comes stock with a 6 plus 1 magazine, or 6, six round magazine, so it's a 6 plus 1 capacity for 7 rounds total. Sorry about that, that was my computer. Um, it weighs, I've got, a, I've got a scale here. Let me make sure it's zeroed. It's kind of a janky kitchen scale, but it'll do. It weighs... Uh, 12, 13, 14 ounces unloaded. Um, I typically run this gun uh, with 147 grain speared gold dots. I'm going to load this up for you safely, all you safety freaks out there. Um, and I'm going to weigh it loaded so you guys can get an idea of what it will weigh when you have it at full capacity. Um, keep in mind that if you are running a 115 grain or 124 grain ammo, um, your weight will vary slightly. But um, for the most part, I think that this will be a pretty good number that you can go by. Um, let's see, let me chamber around here. Keep the gun pointed in a safe direction and all that jazz. Alright. So then the CAR CM9, fully loaded to capacity, weighs uh, one pound and three ounces. So 19 ounces total. Um, I think that that is a very reasonable weight to EDC. Um, I oftentimes watch EDC videos and I'll see these guys running with a, uh, you know, geez, I've seen people running with like an FN 45 and an extra mag and all of this stuff. And I just, I don't understand how you can carry all of that. But, um, I think it just slightly over a pound, the car CM nine loaded is a good EDC weight. Um, the uh, the gun itself is roughly slide um, it, like back of the slide in front of the slide is a, j about five and a quarter inches. The gun is about four inches tall, and whoa, let's see if I can do this on camera. Just about an inch wide, maybe three quarters of an inch wide. Um, it's very concealable. I think um, something that's important with an EDC handgun is thickness, um, much more so than length. Um, uh, the Glock is um, a little over an inch wide, and I just I think about it in terms of you know the width of your gun is what you're adding to your waistline. So if you are, I wear a 34 um, waisted pant, and so if I'm stuffing a gun that's over an inch wide into my waistband, I'm adding that much more um, width to my body, and that can cause your pants to be tight and uncomfortable. So I think at just under an inch, the CAR CM9 is a very good concealed carry option for comfort. Remember guys, you want your concealed carry handguns to be comfortable, otherwise you're just going to tire of them and eventually leave them home where you'll be without them. The next thing that I think is really important is a good holster. I have been carrying the car in a crossbreed mini tuck, I believe this is. This is the one, um, they have a mini tuck and they have a micro tuck and I honestly would have to go look at their website to remember which one this is. It cost me about $70 for the cowhide back and this is a um, single clip holster which I like because once you have it kind of in position and clipped you can adjust the cant on the pivot here. Um, I like that, some guys don't, that's cool, it works for me. But um, Crossbreed makes a very quality holster, and it just slides right in there. This backing, I'm a lefty, so it goes in, whoa, sorry about that, guys. It goes into my pants like this. This side goes against your skin. This side faces out. This goes over, the, over your pants and, and clips over your belt. And um, the, the kind of the, the snugness of your belt acts as the retention. This is not going to hold the gun in there by itself. But um, with, your, with your belt and tightened down across that, it'll hold the gun in there very smooth. Um, you can buy the car, you can buy um, additional magazines for the car. They make, this is a six, they make a seven and an eight round mag. The seven round mag is going to have another, uh, like a little kind of a finger support thumb plate that adds room for the additional round. And the eight rounder will actually have, um, you know, about a, about a, I don't know, half an inch that sticks out of the bottom of the gun that's got a black, like a black little plastic thing on it too for a finger support. Um, 
I have bought an additional seven round magazine and I'm waiting for it to come. It did not make it in time for this review, but um, I, I would recommend carrying two mags. Uh, if I'm carrying my Glock and I have, you know, 10 rounds plus one in the chamber for a total of 11 rounds, I generally don't have, um, I don't feel a need to carry uh, additional ammo. But I mean, if I have something like the SP-101, I'm almost always packing extra ammo. So since this one has about the same capacity, I would recommend getting a second magazine. Also for malfunctions, you know, these micro guns tend to be a little less reliable than larger, you know, larger firearms that um, may or may not be proven not to malfunction. Um, I'm going to tell you that when you buy a car, they recommend that you run at least 200 rounds through the gun before you trust it to be reliable. Here's what I'm going to say. I've done that. Even in the break-in period, I'm not, I've not had a single failure. This gun has been completely reliable. Um, if you get on the forums, there are a lot of people out there that will tell you they've had problems with them and give you some um, tips and recommendations on what to do to fix those. I have not seen that. Maybe it's just a particular gun that I have. Um, I got lucky. Who knows? But all I know is in my experience, the car has been entirely reliable. Um, for those of you with experience with the car, you know that what it's like real claim to fame is, this is an empty gun, gentlemen, what it's real claim to fame is, is um, just this really buttery smooth trigger. It's got a long double action trigger pull with a very smooth break. No grit, no, um, you know, no holds ups, no hold ups or anything like that. It's just a long smooth trigger pull to an even break. Um, I would say this is about as light as I would be comfortable going for a CCW handguns trigger, um, but I do think that that trigger pull allows you to be ac accurate. I have owned the Ruger LCP, I have owned the kel PF9, those guns that have really long, really heavy trigger pulls, and I'm just going to be honest and tell you that I'm not a fan. Um, I found those trigger pulls to be uh, detrimental to my accuracy. With this gun, at a good self-defense distance, 15 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet, I can get a decent grouping. The sights on it are um, quite good. Uh, it's a single cut in the front, in the back, with a with a, a bar at the bottom and just a dot sight on the front. Um, some people don't like this these method of sights or this sight picture. I found it to be pretty good. Um, you know, would I like night sights on it? Of course, but at this point in time, this works for me. Um, I can rapid fire with it and and maintain my accuracy. The recoil on it is very manageable. Um, I'm gonna roll in some footage, some footage now of, of myself and my wife shooting it. You can kind of um, get a get an idea for what the recoil looks like and uh, you know just sort of see how it operates um, in action. But um, yeah, guys, let me show you how a field strip really quick. It's very simple. It's not as simple as a Glock. It is slightly more complicated than that. Let me correct my focus there, guys. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. Um, it is not as simple as a Glock. It is slightly more complicated than that. It, it kind of reminds me of my uh, Ruger P95 that I used to have, but there is a mark here on the slide and a mark here on the frame. And so what you do is, making sure it's unloaded, of course. Uh, let's see, how can I do this? I need to work around my camera here. So making sure it's unloaded, you withdraw the slide to the, to, and line those marks up. And then you push on the opposite side on this silver little button, and it pops the slide stop, allegedly. Oh, come on. Out. Oh, there we go. That pulls free, and then the slide slides off. I found that sometimes it locks up, and just a trigger pull will loosen it up. You know what? I know what I did wrong. This is, like I said, it's not as easy to, uh, to take apart as the Glock, however, it is normally not this difficult. What I forgot to do there is pull the trigger. Boom. So then we are going to bring this back to those marks again, pop that slide stop out, pull it free, and just kind of goose it off, just like that. No big deal. That, that, I really, I, that really is not as hard as I made that look. Um, it has a non-captured double recoil spring. What non-captured means is that the front spring on here, as you're going to see, um, is not held on to the end. It is free, just like that. And then it has a, 
a barrel. The feed ramp on this barrel is offset. You can see that it's slightly off to the left there. What that allows is for you to have a um, slightly lower bore axis. So that means that as you're holding the gun, the barrel it lines up closer with your hand than, than guns normally do. You can see this is dirty because I just got this back from the range. But um, that allows uh, greater accuracy, uh, more managed recoil, and I'll tell you all of that's true. Um, in comparison to the P95, not the P95, the LCP or the PF9, um, this gun's recoil is incredibly manageable. Um, even my wife likes to shoot it, and she hated those other two guns, so that's saying something. Um, the barrel here is um, a, let's see, from the chamber, it's three inches. So, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a three inch barrel. Um, as I mentioned, I, I uh, excuse me, I have had um, great luck with accuracy with it. I, I've mentioned this in many of my videos before, but I am not super experienced with this kind of stuff. I haven't been owning guns for a long time, so I'm not an expert shooter, but I can get decent groupings with this firearm. Um, reassembly is just everything that I did. Opposite, this is the one trick though. Let me focus this so you guys can see. Um, you have to get the open end of this spring um, to line up, and I believe you put the open end towards the bottom, or if the slide is sitting on a table like this, the top of the slide, like this. Um, if you don't do it just right, no, I had that backwards, so you put the spring the other way, so the open end is facing towards the top of the slide when you reassemble. If you do it the other way, the, um, whoa, this is really hard to do around the camera with, with one hand, guys. Um, if you do it the other way, the spring can stick out through the, the guide the guide rod hole, which isn't good, but it's easy to fix. And you just slide the spring back in like that. No big deal. And then the gun just assembles. And then you just look down through the hole here. Oof, sorry about that. This is, hang on, okay, much better. So then you just look down through the hole here so you can see the lug on the barrel. Sorry about that, my video cut out. Um, so what I was saying is, is you just, you kind of line it back up so you can see through the barrel lug there. You have your slide stop, and it just goes uh, straight back down through there. You line up these holes, click together, just like that. Work the slide, pull the trigger, you're good to go. Um, Whoa, <laughs> got away from me there for a minute. Sorry about that. Um, these are really informal, if you can't tell. I'm not worrying too much about it. I think you guys are getting the information that you're gonna want out of this. So, um, let's see, at just over a pound fully loaded, uh, less than an inch thick, and um, at the price point, I paid under $400 for this gun. I would have to look up the invoice to tell you exactly, but I think it was like 370 from cheaperthandirt.com. Um, I think it is a fantastic value for a firearm. You are within the price of the uh, LC9, you are within the price of the PF9, and I'm going to be honest and tell you, I think you're getting a better firearm from Carr. Um, it's accurate, it's light, it's fun to shoot, um, it's easy to maintain, um, despite my problems getting it apart and putting it back together. And um, I have found it very, very, very reliable, and I would trust it with my life. Um, I, uh, I would recommend a crossbreed holster for it, or maybe a Remora holster, and um, then I think you're set, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, or if I skipped anything that you wanted to know about, just uh, send me a PM, comment on the video, and I will do my best to answer your questions. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day. Talk to you later. Shutters and triggers. Out of here.